I've never met a Calvinist that says, uh, I'm elected to be in hell. <laughs> they're all saying they're elected to be in heaven. Hi, and welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez. And today we are tackling a topic, and it's actually going to go through a series of videos. We're going to talk about Calvinism. But before we get into it, I want to thank you for being here. If you've been here before, make sure that you drop a comment. If this is your first time here, like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things. You can check out our website, BibleLineMinistries.org, and you can send a question in there. We usually answer users' questions uh, with good Bible answers. But today, and for the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about Calvinism. Now, there's a reason why I want to address this topic it is because I have done a lot of research online to try and see how I can best serve the online community with Bible answers. And time after time after time, I'm falling onto videos that have hundreds of thousands of views, and they try to tackle salvation issues. Questions like, can I know I'm going to heaven? Uh, am I 100% guaranteed of my salvation, eternal security? And I think these are important topics, but many times the people who are on the videos, they do their best. They try to support their view with the Bible, but it comes across Calvinistic. And you find out a lot of these people that are making videos, they're Calvinists. What does it mean to be a Calvinist? What does it mean to be a two point, three point, four point, three and one half point? What do these things mean? Well, we're going to talk about that, especially today in today's video. The one thing I want you to understand is when we study the Bible, we have to study the Bible without any impact or influence from man's theology. Now, there are some basic things hermeneutically that we apply. Uh, the application of context and reference and how words have been used in the past in the Bible and how they're used now. Common principles throughout the entire theme of Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We apply those things. But it's an error to take man's theology and cram the Bible into that theology. And that's exactly what Calvinism does. So I want to talk about the five dangers of Calvinism. What we're going to discuss throughout these series of videos is the history of Calvinism, understanding TULIP. That's an acronym with five letters, and each letter represents a different core tenet of Calvinism. We're going to talk about the danger in the total depravity of man, the danger in unconditional election, the danger in the limited atonement, the danger of irresistible grace, the danger of perseverance of the saints. And I say the danger because they are dangerous in that they do not rightly divide the word of truth. They don't do it. And many people that are on YouTube, maybe you have even seen this video. You've come here to this video because we have commented on your comment. You're looking for peace. You're looking for assurance. And you've listened to a video of somebody who gives you no peace and assurance. They say things like God picks and God chooses who's going to go to heaven, who's going to going to go to hell. And guess what? You just got to deal with it. Okay, that sounds great. I've never met a Calvinist that says, uh, I'm elected to be in hell. <laughs> they're all saying they're elected to be in heaven. And here you are trying to find the truth and you can't get a solid answer. We want to give you a biblical answer. And it has to start with exposing this heresy of Calvinism. And then obviously we'll conclude with why grace is the only solution to Calvinism. So let's start here, the history of Calvinism. First, it's a theology based on, upon the teaching of John Calvin from 1509 to 1564. And a lot of people still reference his writings. It started as a movement in the Protestant Reformation. There are two main documents that we get these tenets of Calvinism from. And there have been meetings several times after these two initial documents and meetings that have just expounded upon and clarified what is Calvinism. But they are the Canons and the Synod of Dort and the Westminster Confession. These outline the theologies and doctrinal positions that we've come to know as Calvinism. Calvinism leans heavily upon these two things, God's sovereignty and man's free will. And it's very popular among young evangelical Christians today and pastors. Pastors that may have been free grace before are becoming one, two, three, four, five point Calvinists. So what we're going to tackle next here are the four starting point errors of Calvinism. Number one, election, predestination, and calling are all the same words that cause the salvation of man. That's one of the teachings of Calvinism. So anytime you see the word elect or predestination or calling, 
They believe that's all the same thing. It has to be salvation of man because man, God is sovereign and God is, is overall. So man has no choice in, in his salvation. Is that true? We're going to look at that. They say that faith is the gift of God in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, not salvation. And that's just an error. Salvation is the gift of God that we receive by faith in Jesus Christ. He's the object in which we place our faith to have salvation. The third error here is man does not have a free will. And the fourth error is God's sovereignty demands that since the Holy Spirit is present in the believer, there must be fruit. And we're going to talk about those more in the next video. So we'll see you then. 